In today's video, I am going to talk about how to tell what your cash value is growing by each year. Because it can be a very confusing topic when you start looking at the information you receive from the life insurance company, such as your annual statement that says, here's your dividend this year. And then you take out your calculator and you start to look at what your cash value was last year, this year, and the amount it grew by does not match with that dividend. And you're like, what is going on here? It can be very confusing and it can be frustrating for some too, because it's your money we're talking about. And when the math doesn't add up, we start to wonder, were, were mistakes made? Why isn't the math adding up? I'm frustrated. Like, how do I just tell what the cash value is growing by and are the numbers correct? So we're going to go through that in today's video. So how is interest applied to my policy? And when I say interest, what I'm referring to is the total dividend or total dividends and guaranteed rate that is applied to a whole life insurance policy. The total gross dollar amount I'm getting from the life insurance company. So what you will see as a policyholder is you will receive a dividend. Dividends are non-guaranteed, but we've seen mutual companies pay them for over 160 years, especially the top companies. And where you will actually see that dividend, so you can see the number, we're gonna look at some examples as we progress through this video. You can see it on your annual statement. You will receive this every year on your policy anniversary date, which is when your premiums do. You could also see it on your online account. Now, dividends are typically paid with most whole life insurance policies in the second year, and usually it's at the end of the second year, not at the beginning. However, you will be able to see what you should be receiving in a dividend payment at the end of the second year. You could see that typically at the beginning of the second year. I hope that made sense, but we'll continue to go through everything. But you can see the total dividend that's received on your annual statement and online account. Now we've got the guaranteed rate. So with the guaranteed rate, this does not show up on your online portal and you will not see it on your annual statement either. So to provide a little bit of information on this, let's assume you have a policy with a company that has a dividend rate of 6%. When you look it up online, you see that the company's dividend interest rate is 6%. We'll assume that the guaranteed rate on your particular product is 3%, okay? So when you see, back to the dividends, your dividend received on your annual statement, what do you feel that that reflects? What rate? I would assume the 6% dividend interest rate. However, that is not the case. The dividend on your annual statement and on the illustration for that matter excludes the guaranteed piece. This is referred to as the surplus, which is the difference between the dividend rate and the guaranteed rate. In this particular example, it would be 3%. If you had a product with a guaranteed rate of 2%, then the surplus would be 4%. And the dividend, when you see your annual statement, the dividend that you received would be reflective of that surplus of 4%. Point being, the dividend excludes the guaranteed piece. So where do we see the guaranteed rate? Because if I received $20,000 and we'll say 10,000 of that was dividend piece, where do I actually see that the company paid me the $10,000 in guaranteed interest? This is what I'd wonder. I'd want to know, okay, how does the math add up here? So unfortunately, they do not provide it anywhere. It's not transparent at all in my opinion. So here's how we find, find out. How can I see my actual cash value growth? Actual is the key word here in my opinion. What we wanna do is look at our annual statement. Then we want to compare the cash value from last year with this year. What did I have last year? What do I have this year? Subtract my payments, and then I'll have my total growth. Examples, we're gonna look at some illustrations and an actual policy too that's five years old, so you can see exactly what the individual received in dividends and then what his actual cash value growth was. So our example, you start a policy in the first year, 
you pay $100,000. At the end of that first year, your cash value is $88,000. You see that on the illustration, both on the guaranteed and non-guaranteed column. That's your actual cash value at the end of the first year. Now, what I'll add, with some companies, you might see a case where at the beginning of the first year, you see $86,000. And then at the end of the first year, it hits that 88,000 that was illustrated. So sometimes you will see growth from the beginning through the end of the first year. When that occurs, everything's applied at the end of that policy year. But that's with some companies and that's isolating the first year there. But what we will see at the end of the first year, $88,000, no dividends are paid in the first year with most policies. Even if a dividend is paid though, What's my actual growth here? $12,000, negative $12,000. So I paid in 100 and I've got 88. Year two, I paid another $100,000. End of year cash value, I'm at 190. What's my annual cash value growth? What did I receive from the insurance company in year two alone? $2,000. The reason why? Because I was at 88, I added 100 to it which brings me to 188, but my cash value was 190, which means I received $2,000 in total guarantees and dividends, everything from the insurance company. That's the total growth. Year three, I funded $50,000. End of year cash value, 245. What's my actual cash value growth? $5,000. Because I was at 190, I added 50 to it, which brings me to what? That brings me to 240, but then my end of year cash value was 245, which means I received total earnings of $5,000 from the insurance company. Same thing, year four, funded 50,000, end of year cash value 305, which means I have $10,000 in annual cash value growth. So simple, right, as we go through that piece. However, here's where it gets confusing. In year four, when we measure the cash value growth, it was $10,000. However, on your annual statement, you see that the annual dividend is $5,000. This is where people get confused because the dividend represents what? The full dividend rate if it's 6%? No, it excludes the guaranteed piece. This is where the confusion comes from. Why do they do it like this? I don't know, I don't have an answer for that. I wish I knew, but there's several reasons behind it. But the dividend piece is excluding the guaranteed portion, which is why it does not match up to our total growth. Let's look at an example. We'll look at the guarantees, and then we'll look at the non-guaranteed values. And this will be fun. So let's begin first with an illustration. And let's begin with this piece. So we've got a policy juiced for cash value. Here's the funding schedule we just looked at. On the left, guarantees, total outlay, $100,000 years one through two, 50K per year, years three through 10. Current represents the current dividend rate. This is with a company that has a 5.75% dividend interest rate. First year, 100 in, there's your cash value, 88,000. Look at your guaranteed cash value, 88,000 and change because no dividends are paid in the first year. So what I can be confident of as a consumer is when I start this policy, if this is my policy, I'm 40 years old, I make a $100,000 payment all up front, 12 months later on my anniversary date, it's going to hit this. Next year, if nothing changes at all, I can reference this illustration again. However, I would not do that. I would look at an in-force illustration with the updated dividend rate, insurance expenses, if my payments change, everything's fresh that way. But first year, there's no change. Most important thing, if you're just trying to find out what will my cash value grow by each year, I would look at an in-force illustration, see what the cash value is illustrated to hit at the end of the year you're in, and then when you receive your annual statement, it should match up. Now, the most important thing there is assuming, or what I'm assuming here, is that you make your payment upfront. 
If you've got a flexible PUA rider and you're adding funds over the course of the year, when we add PUA payments, the month we make the, make the PUA payment is the month the company begins to apply dividends and interest. So the illustration assumes we pay everything up front. We don't do that. If we pay sporadically, the values will be a little bit less than illustrated. So that's an important side note to be aware of. But here's our illustration. We can also look at the ledger statement, which will show us the dividends, which will add a layer of confusion when we look at this dividend column. There we go. But let's do this. Let's look at it side by side. And we, begin, we will begin with the guaranteed values to the left. This is the illustration we just looked at. There's our funding, 100 years, one and two. First year cash value, second year cash value based on the guarantees. No dividends because we're looking at the guaranteed values, but cash value growth. This will not be on an annual statement or online account. We've got to manually track this and manually is not that hard. We can drop it in Excel like this. If you have an actual policy, we'll update it every year. But this is really what I'm interested in because it displays the net number that I'm receiving every year. If we really want to have fun, we'll add another column that shows the total gain over time. So I can see what's my total payments compared to the total cash value. We can get fancy and add the death benefit too. But what do I see here? Based on the guarantees, negative the first three years, meaning I'm getting less back than what I'm paying in. Year three to four, I got my 50K back. It was 235. I paid in 50. If I just added 50 at 0%, it would be 285 and change, but I got a little bit more on top of it, which is what I received from the insurance company. And then I see it continue to appreciate over time. And again, this is a worst case scenario based on the guarantees. Let's look at the non guaranteed values, the dividend illustration. Here we go. Same thing in the first year. So if you ever ask the question, what did I earn in guaranteed interest in the first policy year? How I like to answer that question is, let's go back to the illustration because that displayed exactly what the cash value would hit. I paid in 100 and this is exactly what I would hit. There's no additional interest or anything that's going to make that illustrated value higher. I wish that happened, but that does not happen. So here we go, our annual dividend column. So if the dividend rate does not change, we would see this on our annual statement and online portal. What's very confusing about this? Not the first year, because dividends aren't paid typically, but look at this the second year. The dividend's 41.72. So if this is you, what does that make you think? My policy grew by 41.72. But when we look at the actual cash value growth, what happened? Year one, you were at 88 and change. You added 100, which if you just get the full 100 back, you'd be at 188, but you're at 190 and change. So when we look at the difference there from what, and back out what we paid, there's the growth, 2403. So the actual growth was less than what we received in the dividend. Doesn't make it easy, does it? Now, at the same time, what you would see here, it's a trend like this, in the beginning of the second year, you might see this at about 186. Could we even be a little bit less than that? But then after the company applies that dividend, then it jumps to the 190. So the dividend does help you achieve the cash value of 190 at the end of policy year two. However, just looking at the net values here, this does simplify it in my opinion. But we can show both if someone wants to see both. This is automatic from the insurance company. But that confusion typically only occurs early on, the second year, sometimes the third. We can see by year three, we've got a dividend here, and there's the actual cash value growth. The actual cash value growth, with some rare exceptions of the first um, or the year two and year three, the actual cash value growth will often exceed whatever that annual dividend, dividend is. That's almost always the, the case because this is all, including the dividend plus the guaranteed portion. And again, except for the early years, 
or I've got more going on, but I'm not going to get into the technical weeds today. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's a nice illustration that's based off a fresh illustration we just ran. Let's wrap this up by looking at an actual policy. We're going to look at just the first five years. So this was a policy that was started five years ago, back in 2018, I believe it was. It was 2018, and here we go. 52-year-old male, he received a preferred plus rating, and here's what he paid in under annual outlay. First two years, he max funded the policy just over $303,000. So he's max funding it. We've got his total funding, which tracks the total payments, and we've got the net cash value. This was actually pulled. We pulled it from his annual statement, so we know what the actual values were at the end of each year. And the same is true of his death benefit. So we've got the dividend from his annual statement, but then we've got this column, which is what we added. So first year, he pays in $303,000. His cash value was 261. No dividends in the first year. Cash value growth is what? Over a $40,000 hit. First year is the worst year. We've got that premium at 10%, a little bit less actually, but that's what's taking the biggest bite. Second year, 303 paid in again. Annual dividend, this was on his statement, 99.51. Actual cash value growth, 43.66. How we got that 43.66 is because we were at 261. We paid in 308. The end of the second year, it's worth 569 and change, meaning we got the 3038 back plus another 4366. That's how we're attaining the actual cash value growth each year. Year three, what happened? He paid a minimal amount, 31.8. Annual dividend, 11,647. Actual cash value growth, $18,000 and change. Same thing the next couple of years, over 20,000. There's his dividend. And the thing is, he's receiving this from the insurance company. This is not received from the insurance company. So what we do when we put together a performance review or just a policy review, looking at it each year, I'm very interested in that piece because if it's me, I just want to know what is it growing by each year. Then again, as time passes, we can look at a total gain column. We see that he has a gain when policy year four. At that point in time, he's got more money in cash value than what he's paid into the product. Paid into the product. He's paid in 670 and he's got 672. Year five, now he's got a decent gain and it'll get better and better from this point forward. But when looking at the cash value growth, the actual growth helps a lot. So how we track the actual cash value growth, just to simplify, look at what your cash value was last year, compare it with this year, subtract your payments, and that should give you the net growth. If you're working with us, we'll do it for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe for more, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.